Good morning. Hey, let's uh, let's uh, let's read this, and uh, that way we'll have a copy of this so that people may hear of the character and nature of God and share it with their children. Okay, Deuteronomy chapter five, uh, starting with verse four. The Lord talked with you face to face in the mount, out of the midst of fire, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have known other gods before me. Thou shalt not make thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in the waters beneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Keep the Sabbath day to sanctify it, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy ox, nor thine ass, nor any of thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates, that thy manservant and thy maidservant may rest as well as thou. And remember that thou wast a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by stretched out arm. Therefore the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. Honor thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged and that it may go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, neither shalt thou commit adultery, neither shalt thou steal, neither shalt thou bear false witness against thy neighbor, neither shalt thou desire thy neighbor's wife, neither shalt thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, or his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. These words the Lord spake unto all your assembly in the mount out of the midst of the fire of the cloud and of thick darkness with a great voice, and he added, No more. And now, over here in Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. All right, this last verse, these last verses here, eight and nine, shall bind them as a sign upon your hand. He's not, God isn't saying your physical hand. Okay, he's saying the powers. Bind them. As you go through this life, living your life, make sure that everything you do, all your powers are through these commandments. All right? To be just and righteous in God's eyes, all your ways should be established in God's ways. That's what it means to bind these things to your hand. Bind these things to your powers. All right? Whatever you go out and do, make sure they're your counselors uh, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes all right your focus make sure everything you're doing with your power the focus is a righteous focus not you know using pretense to afflict somebody or break somebody down that's not in the commandments that's part of a false witness. You don't want to be a false witness. You want to be a true witness. And so when you speak honestly about something, you're using your power and your focus to glorify God. Okay? So those are the commandments. Those are the things we want to focus on because that's God's character and nature. Uh, the law was added because of transgression. 
uh, because they didn't know the right way, God revealed the law to them so they could learn the right way. Uh, Galatians 3.19 Wherefore then serveth the law, it was added because of transgression, till the seed should come, which was Jesus Christ. Uh, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ, uh, that we might be justified by faith. So faith comes after the law. When I teach you, if I teach you how to cut an orange in half and then cut flat sections on each side so that you have a perfectly round wedge that's maybe that thick and it's perfectly round so you can split it and put it on a glass so it looks like there's a nice orange wedge on a glass of say iced tea or something then you know how to do that so now you can cut the orange in half and make it a nice wedge and put it on there okay I show you that one time and you know how to do it and so now you do it like that and that's the requirement of say a job you're a waiter or a waitress and part of your job is putting that that garnish on that glass and so the manager shows you how to put that garnish on the glass and you're gonna do that over and over and over and over again you're not gonna learn how to put that garnish on the glass and then after he shows you or she shows you you're not gonna forget because you want to keep your job and part of your job is putting that garnish on the glass and then bringing that glass of tea to the table with a garnish on it now after you learn that, right, after you learn thou shall not steal, okay, so I'm not going to steal anything. Pretty simple. Okay, after you learn that, after you learn how to cut the orange a certain way and put that garnish on the glass, you know that. After you learn how to ride a bicycle, you don't forget how to ride a bicycle. Okay, once we start applying these things in our heart, then faith comes. And that's what is, that's, that's where faith comes in the picture. We're fully persuaded that Jesus Christ is Lord and he's the Kyrios, he's the anointed word of God that came into the world to show me how to cut that orange wedge and put it in the glass. That's, that's what the law and the commandments did for Israel, but it, it didn't succeed because the polluted spirit would always push those things away. We see that happening today. The polluted spirit is pushing aside the commandments of God. So there's a nice reading out of Deuteronomy chapter 5 and uh, that little spot in 6. Hopefully that'll be archived on the YouTube here and we'll be able to pull that up again and again. And as a reminder that the commandments of God will go nowhere until faith comes. Jesus says, commandments, I didn't come to destroy the commandments. I came because I caught a charge. And we're now, the Father and the Son, going to reconcile all things back to God. Through his own word. Go to www.stephenha.fatcow.com and go to the About Him section and you'll read about God's righteousness. Praise God. You'll see how God reconciled us back to himself with his own word and then says, Be ye followers of me. Paul says that in Ephesians 5.1, the Spirit of God working through Paul to encourage people to walk in the paths of light by faith. Praise God. Have a great day.